Yo, what's going on guys? I uh, just wanted to do a little update and show you my uh, rig uh, and just talk about my uh, overclock settings when I'm doing benchmarking. So the whole rig, just to kind of go over it for those of you who don't know, uh, uh, the GPU is an ASUS RTX 3090 and the CPU is a Ryzen 9 5950X and it's cooled by a Corsair H115i Pro Capelix. The motherboard is the MSI X570 Ace uh, motherboard. And let's see what else do we got. Uh, two uh, Samsung 980 Pros in uh, RAID 0 configuration, of course, at PCI Gen 4. And the uh, power supply is an EVGA 1000 watt power supply. So I am on the latest uh, MSI motherboard BIOS, which was just recently updated. As you can see, the BIOS for the day is 2 24 of 2021. And of course, as I said, the Ryzen 950. X uh, CPU and I'm running uh, I've heard to say uh, 32 gigabytes of core, uh, G skill uh, Royal ZPC 3200 CL16 uh, I'm sorry CL14 timing RAM, uh, RAM uh, memory so I want to go over the overclock settings uh, just to show you what I do for my parking so first we're gonna go to CPU now this is on the MSI board so of course this is how it is on the MSI so of course other boards are going to be a little bit different, but some settings will be pretty similar. So 4.7 gigahertz is what I got the CPU ratio uh, set to. Let me catch my breath. I guess I'm talking a little bit too fast. And so as I said, the RAM brain timings are basically at uh, 14, 14, 14, 34, which is basically the default uh, setting. So then when you go to uh, advanced configuration, you're going to go to A and B overclocking. Persistent Boost Overdrive, you're going to choose Advanced, and then that Curve Optimizer I have is set to All Cores and negative 12. I found 12 to be uh, the setting that uh, the highest I could go for the negative offset. And then, let's see what else. Everything else I just left the Auto. Of course you can tinker with those things to change, you know, things. And you also could also uh, do the Core Optimizer Per core, per core, if you want to set your two uh, high performing cores to be a little bit more, uh, you know, better for uh, getting a little more performance out of your CPU. But this is just basically a quick little setup. And then, so basically, everything else I left as you can see there. And then I went over to voltages for the CPU. I went to override mode. And then I set it at 1.3625, which basically puts it at around around there in the window. So let me boot into Windows and then we'll continue the video from here. And I'll show you the benchmark score at these settings. Okay, so now we're in Windows 10 and I wanted to show you my overclock settings for my GPU. Now this isn't my max overclock, but this is what I do for benchmarking. So I set the power limit up to 107, which is the max for the ASUS Tough RTX 3090. Temp limit, I just left that stock, you know, 83 degrees Celsius because it never goes high. Core clock, I added 100 megahertz. Memory clock, I added uh, 600 megahertz, but you can go higher, but I prefer not to go too high because I find that the GDR6 uh, X uh, memory does run a little bit hot, so I want to keep the temperatures a little bit lower for just having that 600. And so on GPUZ, this is what you'll basically see when you have that the overclock setting. So then we'll go to the benchmark uh, results. So time spy. 19,575 was my max score. Graphics score, 20,547. CPU score, 15,439. And that was with the CPU overclocked to roughly 4.7 gigahertz. I think the multiplier set to 47. And voltage, which I had in the BIOS, as I just showed you, at 1.36, which basically puts that 1.368 uh, in the BIOS, in uh, Windows. And so then let's go to uh, port while. 13,571, graphic score, 13,571. So yeah, of course there's no CPU score, which I forgot. So basically the same settings, uh, CPU is still 4.7 gigahertz, and then the GPU is still overclocked. So I do want to give some tips though to getting the best out, best benchmark scores. So I was really tinkering with my system a lot today. I was, uh, this is how it looks when it's in Windows, everything is all blue, which I much rather prefer than all the rainbow colors, which it does in the BIOS. So anyways, uh, I wanted to tell you some tips to get the best uh, scores 
So for example, let's I'm running a, a course here, uh, all one water course. So the first thing you want to do is exit out of that because uh, that will actually eat up some CP cycles. And just by exiting out of that, I actually gained a good, uh, let's go to time spy. On time spy, I actually gained about 500 points just exiting out of the Corsair uh, software. And also if you have like a RGB keyboard, RGB mouse, you want to exit out of those things on Windows. Just basically exit out of them and that will also help. Uh, you know, get a little bit less uh, CPU cycles taken up. So now, of course, everything is just kind of going to its default colors. But basically doing that and then uh, making sure there's nothing else. Like if you have a NVIDIA um, Shadow Play on, turn off the overlay. Basically, you want to cut that off, which I do when I benchmark. And then uh, when you have a afterburner, basically just close it all out. So, like, I have Afterburner, of course, I had it open, I showed you. So just close it out. It'll still be at that overclock setting. So just to confirm, I did close it, but it will still be at the overclock, the GPU, uh, which I showed you in memory. So, yeah, do that, and then I would uh, retest if you haven't done that before. So exit out of all the unnecessary software, and you could gain a good 400, 500 points just on the CPU alone by uh, eliminating some of those uh, CPU cycle uh, things that basically will eat up some of the performance. So just my little tip. So I just thought I'd, you know, talk about that and, you know, show you the very good course. I haven't made making any videos. I've been busy with other things, but, uh, yeah, I'll be definitely posting more as more games come out. I think the next few games that are coming out is Far Cry 6. I don't think that's coming out till late May, maybe even later if it's delayed again. But uh, I'll try to get some more games tested, and I know that uh, next uh, month NVIDIA is going to be releasing, uh, or not releasing, but yeah, they're going to be releasing uh, new BIOS updates for the NVIDIA 30 series cards, including the 3070, 3080, and 3090, which will unlock the, uh, what do you call it? I've been thinking a lot today, I've been benchmarking, my mind is kind of over, uh, overloaded, if you will, but what's it called? Uh, Memory something. Okay, I'm back. I had to just look it up even though I forgot what it was called. But resizable bar, they're going to basically enable that on the 3080, 30, and 3090, and I believe 3070. Now currently the 3060 already has it, and of course you'll need the latest uh, BIOS update on your 3060 motherboard. Now this is courtesy of the Guru 3D. Now, basically, um, on the 3070, 3080, 3090, there's going to be a new BIOS that you download, and you'll update that on your video card, and then you're going to go into the motherboard BIOS, which you also need to update, which I already have the BIOS, which actually has the feature of a resizable bar. You'll enable that, and then apparently you're going to get a, an extra boost in performance or something up to 10%. Some titles apparently get less performance, but it looks like NVIDIA is going to be pre-testing things to... Uh, basically allow it to not have any uh, impact on performance. And these are the current games that are going to uh, benefit from resizable bars. So Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which I played, Battlefield 5, which I have, Forza Horizon 4 I have, Gears of War 5 I have, Metro Exodus I have, and of course Road Dead Redemption, which is probably one of the most popular, part two, it's one of the most popular benchmark titles that I have that uh, is going to uh, benefit from it. So I'll definitely be retesting uh, when this BIOS is uh, out for the video cards to see if I gained any noticeable performance. And of course I have Watch Dogs Legion 2, which I don't really, uh, Watch Dogs Legion, I don't know why I said Watch Dogs Legion 2. Watch Dogs Legion, which I do, but I don't really care too much for that title, so, but yeah, so looking forward to that, and I'll definitely post a video uh, when that's out, and then we'll, we'll see how everything uh, goes with that, and uh, I guess that's about it, so. Again, there's the rig. So, Lighting on here, so and then I'll post some more videos as things come out. And uh, just want to go over all the settings that allow me to uh, get the overclock uh, benchmark towards what you showed. And uh, until then, I'll see you guys around, and I'll definitely be posting more games. Also, still waiting on some more updates for Cyberpunk 2077, which of course they pretty much got royally screwed over by those hackers. So it's gonna be a while until we'll be playing that game a while because I think they're gonna be, you know taking a long time to update things so 
until again, uh, thanks for watching. I appreciate all the support. Sorry for the kind of fast talking rambling. I was kind of, I've been up since like, I don't know, super early in the morning because I just kind of had this benchmark fever, if you will. I felt like really testing out things and at the same time showing some settings that could help other people. And uh, I guess that's about it. So thanks for watching. Uh, see you guys around and uh, Lou Zebrek signing out. Peace out and see you guys soon.